Okay, it's uh, February 25th. Uh, this is the meeting of the Ener Northampton Energy and Sustainability Commission, uh, second floor hearing room, City Hall. And it's a February meeting, uh, and present we have, I'm going to go around the room. Scott Silver, citizen member. We find you, find director. Ned Humphrey, director of public works. Paul Spector, City Council, Ward 2. Dave Pomerantz, director of Central Services. Aiden Maynard, citizen. Hi, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> And Chris Mason, uh, Energy and Sustainability Officer and Staff for the, co for the Commission. So, um, Aiden, uh, you're going to take minutes? Yep. Thank you very much. Um, we have uh, two uh, previous minutes to approve, uh, the December minutes and the January minutes. Um, so I would welcome a motion. motion. Make a motion to approve. And we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? All in favor of uh, approving both mit both sets of minutes? Aye. 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 Any abstentions or? Abstain on, yeah, abstain on December. It was mid December. Okay, so approve on January. Abstain on December. Okay, you getting all this? Mm -hmm. Okay, abstain on both. And you abstain, also abstain on both. Okay, great. Um, all right, next uh, order um, is, is kind of a um, July and August. Uh, I've noticed that the Energy Commission is meeting at the same time the City Council's meeting. City Council shifts their meeting to the second Thursdays in July and August. So in China- Same day, not the same time. No, it, well it overlaps. Um, the problem is this room is occupied during that time and when there's a City Council meeting, uh, the NCTV grabs the City Council chambers in advance and we can't, so we don't have a place to meet. Uh, but on top of that, we have two members, Paul and and bill that would be, um, uh, you know, back-to-back -back meetings with the city council. And I, so I thought I would bring it up and just ask, if the, what, how do the energy commission want to handle this? You can stick with the same time, um, and I can just find a new place. Um, we could shift. I happen to know that the city council is open any other Thursday of those two months. It's the second Thursday is the only time that it's, it's uh, occupied. So I thought I would just put it out to the commission. How do we want to uh, plan for that? I'm sorry, what's our normal time? What's our we normally meet on the second Thursday of every it's month? July 10th and August 14th. Yep, and that's the, those are the only times the city council chamber is occupied at that time of the day, and it's with the city council um, meeting for those times. Well, we could find a different venue to hold it, correct? We could, yeah, that's one. If like the community room mm -hmm. or yeah. DFW if, board room or wherever? Right, if people want to stick with that time, and I particularly wanted Paul and, and Bill to have, to have a chance to say because it's, you know, the two meetings are so back to back. Um, uh, I can find another location or we can pick a different date. It's okay. fine with me. And let me speak for Bill. He said it's just one. <laughs> I have no idea what Bill would say, but it's fine with me. Okay, to pick another location? Find another venue. Sure. Okay, another venue. All right. And we're small enough that the uh, old treasurer's office in the first place. Well, that's what I was going to suggest. I mean, we're yeah, we're going to be moving some things out of there, so okay. it's going to become more a, a more amenable space to meet. Great, I will look at that. And I don't think there's anybody who's reserved that yet, so. No. Okay, okay great, thank you. Um, how do you know? Sorry. Hey, Bill. Hello, hello. Bill, so we're being recorded, so. Okay. Introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, Councilor Dwight, arriving late, with apologies. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, something which we weren't able to do in January, uh, January meeting, what we need to do is uh, pick a new chair for the commission. So I'm just going to toss that out as an agenda item. See how who jumps forward and who votes for who. Aiden was. Uh, the most recent chair, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. And didn't you express interest in continuing that role? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your Highness? I was nominated. <laughs> I nominated my second. Name. Okay, there you go. Get those minutes down. Bill nominated you. <laughs> and you're you spelling the too. name right. Can you speak to the Oh, that's uh, uh, running. I have a feeling all of you, no one else wants it because they don't want any additional burden in their day to day workload. So, I can't paint this. that. <laughs> so you're pulling the short straw. Thank you. And 
Yeah, and, and any input or suggestions on how to step it up or where we need more energy? And my hope is this idea of having kind of a, a residential <coughs> sector focus group is something I want to put some energy into. Um, knowing that Chris is going to be putting more energy into Yeah, I've got some information about further on the agenda too. So. Uh, I don't know if we need to vote. Okay, um, so motions on the table. All in favor of Aiden for Thank chair? You. Looks like it's unanimous. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, update on green that's, that's one year? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, that was five. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> sorry. I'll, I'll be here. here. We oh, met before sorry. the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, it's the update on Green Communities Grants and RFP. Um, so first, the uh, last year's grant is almost completely finished. We're about to get the final report and we actually have one last piece, um, an upgraded AC unit at the Memorial Hall. That should go in next week and then we should be clear um, uh, and ready to apply for the next one due in the end of March. And uh, that has led to um, me wanting to look at, at possibly using the Energy and Sustainability Revolving Fund differently. Um, uh, it is, I've, I no, I've noticed that outdoor LEDs are now eligible. They haven't been eligible for green community grant funds in the past, they are this time. So the post top LEDs that were pretty much ready to go on, um, uh, and there was some hesitant on how big a project we did because we didn't have enough funds to do it all in the revolving fund. Well, now I actually strongly propose that we apply for grant funds for that and use the grant funds to do the post tops because we know that they're eligible. Um, post, post tops, the uh, parking lots, okay. the ornamental yep. uh, okay. post top LED. So this is not the street lights, the Cobra has, but it's uh, the post tops. Um, and it's about a uh, $115,000 project from a uh, um, budget that we've had. And, uh, uh, so I, I would highly recommend that we do that. And the commission in the past has kind of directed me to use the revolving fund towards that type of an effort. But in this case, we get grant money for it, I'd rather do that. And, um, and then there's a number of other things that I'm looking at applying for. And a couple of them would need some feasibility studies done quickly. So um, I would like to have the commission empower us to use the revolving fund for that for a few uh, um, feasibility studies uh, in order to get the hard data that we need to put in for the grant. Um, and those are Smith Vocational Ag High School. Uh, we did a walkthrough with Mark Lance of Cozy Home Performance uh, with an IR camera and looked at the wall and ceiling boundary. And um, at least in a couple spots we found where you snapped a picture, you could it's got a fluted roof, metal fluted roof, and wherever those flutes go up, you know, the cold air comes, the, uh, the, the metal is colder farther in than when it touches the wall. So there's almost there's certainly some airflow coming through there. And uh, so Mark would go in with a blower door, isolate a couple classrooms, um, put some pressure in there, and take pictures. It wouldn't be a quantitative piece, but it would enough for us to really verify that we do have airflow coming through those spots. Um, and then from that, we could build up an estimate of savings and use it to apply for uh, grant funds to go ahead and air seal the, that joint, so just the top of the wall. Um, so that's what I'm gonna wanna do. Mark has given us a price, be about $350 for him to do that. So, peanuts. Um, and that's an, that's an easy one I, I hope for, for me to ask commission for. The other one, um, unfortunately I don't have a dollar amount for, but the water treatment plant uh, right now has a need to do some strong dehumidification of the pipe gallery. And um, it's a very critical piece. It's very high, highly expensive valves and stuff in that, in that area. And they have to be kept dry. Um, right now, uh, when the plant was installed, the dehumidification didn't work. Uh, an upgrade to it included putting in a 67 kilowatt electric resistance heater. Um, and they use the AC to bring it down to 55 degrees to pull the moisture out and then they reheat it before it goes in and they want the, the pipe gallery at around 70, 72 degrees just so it doesn't have any kind of a clammy feel to it whatsoever. And you can 
if you look at the load data, you can see it operating like this, and all of a sudden it jumps up 70 kilowatts, it operates at this level, jumps back down. And it does that the farther and farther into the summer you get, so as you get more, hit more and more humid days, we're just operating at a much higher level. It also means our demand charges are higher, because any kind of peak that happens based on that is jumped up at a higher rate. Um, and it's just kind of known that there's more efficient ways of doing this. So we've, um, I've walked through the, uh, <coughs> working with the utilities, walked through with Kevin Keena of B2Q um, last Friday. Um, uh, B2Q. B2Q. Yeah, B2Q, engineering firm. They work with the utilities. I think actually the guy that was doing the walkthrough was uh, a point person for National Grid for many years. So he was an engineer with National Grid for many years. Anyhow, um, uh, so we, we walked through and he's, he says that he could do an engineering analysis in time for me to get the money for the, get the, get the information for a grant. Um, <coughs> we've, we've only done a walkthrough on Friday and I haven't heard back from him yet on just what he would be looking at in depth and how much it would cost. I've left him a couple of voicemails, so I haven't, I haven't got a cost on it. But I think it could be a number of $1,000. Um, and I do believe the utilities will pay 50% of the cost. So if, it's a, if it looks like it's a feasible project, the utilities will pay 50%, and um, we would have to cover the rest. Um, and schedule-wise, because we're looking at applying for a March 30th, uh, I mean, the end of March deadline. Sorry, because the utilities would pay 50% of the study cost? Or yes. Study costs. Okay. okay. So you're looking for 50 percent from the revolving fund, right? Then to apply for a grant from green communities. Yes, exactly. Because that would give me the information I would need to apply for a grant from green communities to do the whatever installation we came up with, mm -hmm. right? Chris. Yeah. I don't know whether you and I talked about this, but I mean, does he give you any sort of a budget figure? Because you know, there are going to be potential procurement issues. Right. And yes, I understand. Right. One question would be for you, Ned. Um, could it theoretically be $100,000 worth of work to do something in that gallery? And could the design work, feasibility work, be $10,000? Because then we were talking about putting an RFP out, which we'd never make the deadline. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I heard that we could actually, if, if someone was DTM certified, I'd heard that we could use them to do a feasibility study. And I talked to Joe Cook about that, and he says there is no DTM certification for engineers. No. It's only construction. Um, so this might, yeah. But is this, design I wish I had buildings has that $10,000 thing, but I thought engineers didn't have that. Is this horizontal, is the whole horizontal vertical thing? Anything this, involving construction. So the fact that there could be theoretically a hundred thousand dollars worth of dehumidification right. work, you've got to go through the design selection board, which is going to take months yeah. work to get through. Yeah. Right, right. So, so like, go a well, quick question for you: Is sure. is there a reason why you haven't discussed what using water enterprise funds to pay for this? Is it's cost savings for that enterprise fund? No, I'm, I'd be totally fine with that. Um, uh, I'm just not familiar with that, so okay. I, I hadn't, I hadn't looked at that. Did, did. And, and I also think that if, for this project, I'm trying to get into this Green Communities Grant. Green Communities Grant, you can apply for up to 250000 There are 7 million available, there are 40 communities that supposedly will be able to apply, so n not everybody's going to get 250000 So if we have a bunch of small projects, um, uh, we're more likely to get some of them, not all of them. So if this doesn't fly, <coughs> it doesn't. But I'm trying to get as much in as possible, because if we have really good projects, I want you know want a chance to get some funding for them. Um, Is there a feasibility yeah. level? It's sort of a quick and dirty. We know we can make this a lot better. It doesn't go into details. It doesn't quantify the thing. It's either the full thing, but at least it's enough for funding. Right? That's, we that's sort of did that with. Edison performance contract. Okay. Not to the depth that we would need to do now as far as, you know, the engineering work. Um, would any of that be applicable to at least to get something into the package for green communities? Possibly. I mean, we did that for the last grant that we did. Uh, Cozy Home came in and gave us some analysis on how much insulation and air they would do in some of the buildings. And I basically you know, did kind of a, a spreadsheet analysis 
and explain to them my process uh, or you know how I came up with my numbers and they accepted it. I'm not an engineer. But on the pipe gallery, did Con Edison make a recommendation? Con Edison did um, want to do something with that uh, heater. And I think the reason it never moved forward was that the water treatment plant had so much trouble getting it to work it mm -hmm. that they are very shy of touching it. Mm -hmm. And um, and you know it's pretty obvious to me now that I am including Jim Lorela in the conversations and definitely Greg Nundelman, the chief operator there. You know they're they're top on the conversations. I want them to know everything that's going on here. It, so it got so bad that the paint was peeling off of everything, the, roof, the floors, the wall. I mean it was just a nightmare out there. Right, right. And we finally got it working. It's working right. Right. And right. there's potential energy savings. The question is, is that where's the payoff period of that energy savings? Right, because we looked at that in conduit hydropower, but it had a I don't know, 28 or 26 year payback period, and the board was like just too far out there to mm -hmm. make right. it feasible. Right, right. So well, it's more, it's about more than just protecting the pipes, because you could just insulate the pipes and keep coming. Yeah, that was my question. They are they insulated. They're covered with foam. Uh, right, <laughs> the big pipes are, and the expensive valves are on the big pipes, and then there's things like. Uh, the fire hydrant, I mean the uh, uh, you know, sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that, those drip. And some other smaller pipes that are up high. You know, so kind of like the low end, low end pipes that start dripping first. Uh -huh. um, right. So yeah, if we could use water enterprise funds mm -hmm. and we could <coughs> convince Joe that the engineering would be done theoretically through National Grid. Mm -hmm. That might make it easier, at least to just get a preliminary assessment done mm -hmm. in time for the grant. Mm -hmm. Let me, I'll throw one thing out there, because if, if it means that if it's over $10,000, and that's full cost for the assessment, mm -hmm. uh, let's just assume it'll be over 100000 for the project, just because we don't know. Uh, so if it has to be over 100000 for the project and over 10000 for the feasibility study, well, let's assume that it's, um, not over 10,000 for the feasibility study. And we'll assume the utility will pay half of it. So if the commission could say, uh, would, would give us permission to spend $5,000 towards this, grant, uh, knowing that the mayor has to approve it as well. So basically you're, you're, you're basically giving a recommendation <coughs> to the mayor to spend $5,000, you know, if it fits in the situation, how do we how you word this? Um, then that would cover us for anything that could happen quickly. If it's more expensive than that, we couldn't do it quickly anyhow. Does that make sense? Is, is there any rough back in that in calculation of what this is going to save? Yeah, on 20, a yearly basis, is it? 20 to 30% of the dehumidification costs. And do we know what that cost is? He's, that's what Kevin is working, Kevin Keenan is working out right now. But it's... um, Because it's just one big electric bill. Yeah, I, I've heard it'll be on the order of five or six thousand dollars a year savings, um, and it very well may not cost over a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, the things that were being mentioned as we so walked long. through. <coughs> so right. Um, well, the utilities are paying some of it too, so we have to consider whatever the rebate is. A um, little more background. The reason we're looking at this again is because of the resiliency analysis and the key top buildings that we want to be able to keep going if it needs a long power outage, water treatment plant is obviously one of them. And um, the top tier thing to do to make things more resilient is reduce energy use because then your, your generators are going to be able to cover the use of the building for a longer period of time. Um, so that led us to looking back at water treatment plant waste, water treatment plant, Smith Oak, um, you know, some of the really important facilities. Um, so payback time, it may not be just payback time that we're looking at this on. It may be that we're, we're, we're considering more than just you know, simple payback for efficiency. Um, uh, and again, until we have the engineering study, I really don't know how to put that. But um, what we were finding up there is that right now there's the AC system. It has a, a, um, there's a coil off a boiler to, to do reheat that's not being used for some reason. It then goes beyond that, and they are using a big electric um, uh, heater to do reheat. So 
it wouldn't help us resiliency wise because it's still using the energy, but just switching over to that boiler may be a cost savings, and that might be worth doing. Um, the AC unit is dumping all its heat outside right now. Um, I hope we, certainly hope they look at using basically a heat pump, taking that excess heat and putting it farther down the pipe. So, you know, you're, that would be a heat pump of some kind. So they make cool dehumidifying units that heat the space as well mm -hmm. as. Right, right. And I don't know how much that would cost. That might be more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last thing is because it's a water treatment plant, it has a huge um, water filter area. So it's almost a big pond. Uh, and you know what it looks like, you know, the, the open base. So, so there's a huge water source in the building. And that's something else that he was looking at very strongly was just how is the air flowing through this building? You know, if, if the air is flowing the wrong way, that might be why there's a dehumidification problem. Mm. It may be that all you have to do is push the air, you know, through that filter system last and having it, you know, never let that air come into the building. And you might drop your need for dehumidification enormously. Or just pressurize the gallery. Exactly. Or, or pressurize the gallery, right, right, yeah. So, that's so really cheap. and that would be a very cheap uh, solution. So that's the kind of thing he's looking at as well. So, you yeah. know, negative pressure. Negative positive. Positive pressure. Sure no humidity gets into the space. Yeah, positive yeah. pressure in, the, in that and a negative pressure in the, in the um, uh, water, mm -hmm. the pond area, mm -hmm. right? So, so basically balancing the system. So I'm not sure what he's going to come up with, mm -hmm. um, but it might be fairly inexpensive and it might be pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know yet. Hmm. Now, do you know offhand what you're spending annually on electricity up there? Well, I think our budget is 300000 a year. For the plant? Yeah. You said you had a meter. On, oh, it's not just on the electric line. Yeah. No, I do know the, I, I don't have I, the numbers. I'd have to look at the number. I think it's less than that. I think wastewater is 300000 a year for all the pumps. Yeah, wastewater is bigger. Right. Right. So I think water might be in the 150, 200 range a year. So you say five or six thousand right off the top. Right. No, it could be. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody, every, any engineer has looked at it. It's kind of said, hmm. Yeah, that's inefficient. That's you know, a 67 kilowatt electric resistance heater. That's just an inefficient way to heat something. That's a big electric resistance heater. This is not a very elegant system. Mm -hmm. um, okay, well that's that's what I have out. Uh, the other thing we possibly were looking at, so I would put in for the LED post stops. Um, we are looking with Peregrine Energy Group, the same folks that provide <coughs> our data tracking software for the state, the Mass Energy Insight. Um, they have some technology that they say they can, they can help us dive into um, uh, monitoring certain, you know, some buildings in more detail. For instance, Smith Vocational um, right now is one meter for the entire campus. We could possibly sub-meter that. We could start seeing how each individual building is, um, that would be very informative to know how each individual building is using electricity. Forbes Library we, um, has an archive area, which is kind of a funky area. We don't have complete control over how it is monitored. So getting in some more monitoring there would, would help kind of politically and technologically help us possibly drive down energy use there. Um, and the third one we were talking about, Smith Folk. Remember the third one? Smith Folk Blower Door? No, that's, that's a separate um, piece of Smith Oak. Um, so this is actually, oh yes, the JFK pool. JFK pool has got a big energy use. And to kind of monitor in more detail how those systems are being used could be very helpful, particularly since we're probably going to replace those systems in the next number of years. Um, just bringing it up because I'm walking through with these guys, uh, and they are going to give me the information I need to apply for the grant. They say the grant can cover this. Um, so that's something else we're going to apply for, but I don't need money to to get the engineering study. You know, they'll they'll give me the information on that. So you don't need a revolving the fund? No, right. The only thing I need for revolving loan stunt fund is the uh, air infiltration study, three hundred fifty dollars. Possibly something depending on what the cost is for the water treatment plant study, and then I have a, these other couple things that we're going to be uh, tossing in. But all four would be grant funded. Yes, I would. I would put all four in. Yes. 
What's the total you're asking for? Or it depends on what these depends are. Depends on what these all come up to. <coughs> I can't go over 250,000. It depends on what you can well, do. I'd, I'd, I'd like to further the conversation with you about whether or not the enterprise fund can assist right. in that. Yes, and and I actually think the fund. if we don't if we don't get this into the grant fund or if we don't get the grant fund, if there's something to be done at the water treatment plants, I'd want to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I absolutely we want to work to find out how do we do it otherwise. Yeah, it just has to work. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> we are so clear on that, <laughs> and it doesn't go forward until you guys say you're comfortable with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, but if there's a possibility of getting grant funds for it, I'm, that's what I'm putting out in front of the commission. Uh, would you approve our use of the revolving loan fund to support an engineering study for that, up to $5,000? Yeah, I'll make yes. a motion. Okay, why don't, we do a, why don't we do two separate ones? $350 for the air sealing at Smithville? Yeah, that's a little over the top, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm pushing it hard. Actually, two hundred forty-nine. I don't even think it reaches the threshold for requests, right? Because yeah, no. Yeah. So we yeah, the three hundred fifty, I could, I could just do it. I think I have permission right. to use five hundred. I just have to get yeah. a, uh, approved by the mayor, right? Right. So okay, that would be moved. Let's go to the big stuff. Okay, go to the big stuff. I think it's about to make up. All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion um, that the uh, commission endorse and support and vote for the uh, use of up to $5,000 for a feasibility study to look at options to uh, reduce dehumidification at the water filtration plant. Second. Okay, any more discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. Okay, no. Thank you. Okay, oh, and by the way, we have 66000 in the account, uh, and we um, will sell more SREX before July, and we'll probably get another thirty to 40000 with that. Do so. you sell them before the auction? Yeah, when do you sell them? Um, it's up to us. We can sell them anytime we want to, but the price has been rather... What's the price? Wait, no, no. <laughs> the price has been rather depressed. I know, yeah, I know. And uh, last year we waited for the auction, and we got... Right. The bait, you know, the bottom price. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that means we got Yeah, it was great. So, but you, yeah, 285. Yeah, 285. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, I know. Okay. It's become quite the big Yeah. <laughs> really? I got Seven and a half a year. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you want to help me sell SREX? Have you got some inside, inside <laughs> yeah. information? I, I want to sell at the high price. Yeah. Yes. You want to sell yes. 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 Would you call me when you're ready to sell? Me his maybe, SREX. maybe we can bundle no, them. I thought maybe he had a good deal on SREX. No, the ceiling. No, yeah. we've got 285 yeah. on the H car. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Chris, one afterthought on the uh, the B2Q study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, if we tell them you've got up to 5000 to spend, and they say, well, we can only look at two of the four ideas for that, mm -hmm. I don't think we'd be getting the value. I'd rather hear okay. them say, their direction should be look at everything, but at a $5,000 level, rather okay. than do what you can on so much, so many options. Okay, so if, if they can't look at everything, what you're recommending is that don't spend the $5,000, find another way to pay for them to do a good study. Yeah, either that or do a more broad brush approach on more options, because I think Ned's people are gonna to wanna to see more choices Yes. to make sure that the one that they pick really will work. Right, and or, so would I too. Or the exponential offer of enterprise funds. Yeah, right, right, right. 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 Yeah, so yeah. Don't, don't shortchange the scope of the feasibility study just because we've limited the- I hear you, I hear you. Yep, that makes a lot of sense to me. So that's the way I'll do How to use the 5,000 if that just happens to cover what they said they were gonna do. Right, anyhow. Okay. Um, okay, community efficiency working group. Aiden, this is what you brought up last time. Mm -hmm. And I want to, I, so I put it on for, uh, for discussion. Uh, and, and basically just to give a chance for it to get going. And there's a, there's a, a new piece of information on it. Is that the, um, the Mass Clean Energy Center, as you know, we're working on an energy strategy analysis with them. And doing outreach for energy efficiency to, to the broader community is one of the strategies they're focusing on. And it happens to be one that's really kind of the least clear. It's, it's difficult for them to come up with what strategies to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably happening in other places as well. Because what I'm hearing, and I'm hearing it fairly strong from their, um, uh, not from them directly, but from the group that they hired, Meister Group, um, 
that the Clean Energy Center is going to come out with some funding for the folks that are doing these energy strategies piece, and they want to focus it on helping communities plan, strategize, come up with ideas, not to do the programs, but to set in place the planning to do the programs, which is just what we're looking to do. I mean, you know, doing surveys, analyzing what your buildings are, um, picking the, 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 um, the audience to, uh, to, to go for, that type of thing. So that's being rumored. So the idea of the Energy Commission kind of taking that as a piece, you very well might have some funds to back you up um, to do this coming forward. Yeah, well, I think it wouldn't be too early or too late to form a, a working group or you know, some folks focusing on this. Mm. I'd be happy to do it. I, mean, I, have, I have one idea we talked about before, which also got mentioned, the strategies group of uh, mandatory disclosure. Energy, right. energy expense di disclosure yeah. for the time of a home sale, that there's either some kind of basic rating done or the property owner has to disclose the utility bills. It's happening in big cities. Pretty, it's more popular. So it's one idea I'd love to talk with um, and work on, think through. And there's a new uh, energy rating tool that just came out, or the DOE tool, just got in partnership with, with okay. BPI Building Institute. Yeah. So they're looking to spread this, and it ties on MLS listings, and it's all the kind of stuff that uh, Mass Clean Energy Center I think is uh, would support and is aware of. So it's one one initiative that I'm personally interested in uh, exploring and thinking through. And I'd love to make a working group. I don't know if it's any of you folks on it, but it probably mean meeting occasionally outside of this process. I don't know what um, what that would look like. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that it probably would take a meeting outside of this process, mm -hmm. um, you know, a sub, I'm a subgroup um, to focus on this. Yeah. And I love the idea myself, but I think we need to talk to them. It, it seems to me that, that naturally speaking with Wayne and with uh, Louis, um, at least I, I like the idea of uh, disclosure, at least on the disclosure aspect, and see um, a better, better sense of what the well, the feel, I, I'm sure that you get some resistance from uh, another realtor, but for that, that said, I think it's um, informed consent in a buyer, and providing a buyer a, a, the information relative to the significant costs associated with the purchase. So, you know, Louis, I'm sure, has some, some thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. No doubt what he has this month, but I mean, you wouldn't have to be a subcommittee of this committee. But we could make it a subcommittee if you wanted to, and then and some of the people who aren't here might be more interested, like Mary. Right, Mary would be perfect, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, actually probably everyone who's not here is not some <laughs> bubble <of> the city. <laughs> yeah, would have more them. time. <laughs> right. Yeah. We'll just sign them up, they're part of yeah. the subcommittee now. <laughs> we can vote for their chair now. Yeah. <laughs> but Bruce, I'm sure Bruce mentioned being interested. Yeah. I think it's great personally. The only comment I'd make is this might be something partially for political cover, but also partially to serve as a regional statement to see it's worth working with other towns that are involved. Yeah. It'd be nice if it wasn't just mm -hmm. an if it was half the towns in the valley were doing something similar, and maybe it's identical to the same process. You mean around that disclosure idea? Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, Montague and Amherst and East Hampton, they're really on a completely near side of the valley, but. Yeah, well, part of the, what the subcommittee could do would be to reach out to, to the other energy, uh, green community contact people there, and you know, probably after bringing it to this group, you know, approving, getting support for whatever we're working on, and then bringing it there to form some kind of proposal, then to take it to the next step in Northampton. Okay. So structuring this, as far as w whether it was a subcommittee of the Energy Commission or a separate one, is there, I mean, that, that's something we could probably bat around a bit right now, and how would that happen? I, I guess if it was a subcommittee here, we wanted to bring in people who aren't on the commission, the commission can have it associate members so perhaps they could be associate members that come in and, and have it be under the energy commission there's uh, under there pros and cons mass open them. meeting law there's some challenges that, that mm -hmm. are newly defined so that you have to be careful it's a subcommittee of this committee many and if they constitute a quorum of this committee then, and they start to convene outside of public meetings and discussions Doing research and stuff like that, it, it would be a violation of both the law. It wouldn't be a quorum. It's associated with probably three. I think it, I think it doesn't matter. I think if, even if there's only one person from this committee, huh. if you're doing the subcommittee 
with other people, it's still don't mean it. It's not a big deal to advertise it, and, and the minutes are one page. So. And then you forty eight hours now. Forty eight hours of business day. Yep. Not not holidays and weekends as we discovered recently. And that um, <laughs> the and that's still fine. That would be good. And, um, um, but if there were a more formal approach that you want to take before it actually becomes mm -hmm. part of this committee, maybe you know just seeking out the people who are here and seeing if they're interested, and other people externally who um, could be helpful in the discussion. So and then, involving people externally, would that be part of the outreach effort, or would that be would they be on the? I think the line is if we create a subcommittee, who's ever on it, committee members from here or otherwise, it's open meeting. Wayne, can I just toss in this real question? Advisory committee members are, are non voting members, so is that okay? So if you're creating a subcommittee, even if it's only Aiden mm -hmm. and the other people are advisory, it's a committee. If you on your own query other people to get ideas so that Aiden can make a proposal to the full committee. It's not a subcommittee. Right. You're talking to whoever you want to do. It's kind of like the working group subcommittee <laughs> difference. It's, right. it's, it's you doing research on the viability of having a subcommittee, basically. That you would huh. you would gather your information, come back and say, I'd like to establish a subcommittee to focus on this. And at that point, you've gotten your external input. Um, you wouldn't necessarily be constrained by open meeting law. And then once it becomes under the aegis of this committee, then all, all open meeting law regulations apply and it's good I mean it's all good because it's we, we clearly want to do public outreach and they should thereby be public meetings as well but in the meantime there's you know as you're trying to form the idea more solidly at least you have enough opportunities to free agents to go around and do that before you have to start posting it every single time you decide to go out to eat with someone so I'm remembering a similar conversation about a past working group we had and it did come down to the designation of a Formal subcommittee versus a working group. Yeah, and we, had, that we opted for a working group for just these reasons. Maybe things have changed since then, but it sounds like that's the direction we ought to take. Start as a working group, at least. Mm -hmm. there, there are new, stricter rules as of 2012. For this is a law, and I don't know if that's necessary. We're still, it's a big learning curve. We're just trying to catch up. So usually what we, we've chosen to do is err on the side of caution. Yeah. I was told I could never speak to Bill Paul ever again. You know, I, 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 I didn't acknowledge that he's here. I mean, that he heard something over there. <laughs> so if um, if some if if, if Aiden was to go out and, and to start try to drum up some more support outside the community, and Mary wanted to join him, um, or or and, and Brian, you know, three people from the Energy Commission here. That's not a problem because it's not a quorum, or that well, is, or is that? So I, would, I would just say for the, it's not a big deal to post the meeting, just so we're erring on the side of caution. Yeah. That's what we're kind of saying to everybody. Just post the, the big difference is you post the meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, the tricky part is what would you post it as? They're not. You could post it as as an energy commission subcommittee meeting. Well, it does a non-existent yeah, we, subcommittee. We just had that. No, we weren't under. We weren't looking necessarily at the new rules, but we had under. Um, Economic development, we had a similar, we still have a, a committee under that, and that committee just posts their own meeting times as a sub, it wasn't called a working group, it was called a subcommittee of the economic development committee. And they just make sure they follow all the same open meeting rules. I mean, I think if Aiden goes out to try and find out, for instance, do all the background research that Wayne was talking about, find out the other communities that may have already done something similar, or yeah. what, what's the appropriate assessment, what's the appropriate process, and do that before it actually becomes a subcommittee. So I think the first yeah, step yeah. would be meeting with three people from this group, and then creating a you know, priority list or some an agenda of what to focus on. I, mean, I, I brought up one thing, but. Well, you know, if that's the case, then, then, then Paul's recommendation probably would be about that. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a community it, yeah. outreach. So if there's, if there's three subcommittee that's yeah. looking at everything, and then we're right. going to pick a few things to work on, and then we take it to the next step of reaching out to the wider community, right. continue to post, and uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just be free. I understand the area. Who are the people who are interested? Um, Bruce. Bruce. Okay. Brian Bruce. Um, those are the two I'm thinking of. Oh, three. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Christine. Yeah, Christina, uh, possibly. Associate number. That's true. Yeah. Great. And quite frankly, 
I would be, if at all possible, I would be very happy to That'd see one of those too. Yeah, great. Um, well, you have yeah, near a quorum there, so. Well, I'm not a voting yeah. member. Right, that's so, right, you're not a voting member. Right, right. And, no, and neither is Christina. Christina's not a voting member either. She's an associate member. associate member, though, still. Right. She's uh, under the, the cone of silence. Or the cone of not silence, actually. Really? Yeah. Even though she's even, even though she's not a associate voting member? Associate member, she's appointed. She's um, yeah, okay. serving, <coughs> serving the name of the city. Okay, right. And then if a grant, you know, grant possibility does come true through, then this might entail some staff time, whether it's more, you know, being paid, me being paid or someone else being paid. I don't know. Um, but that point, yeah, at that point, we this group, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so I'll send an email to everyone on the commission, just st stating kind of my interest in forming this uh, in the outreach group, and then asking if anyone wants to join. And then with a the goal being that we identify priorities relating to the broader community and then bring it back here and um, see who is interested and then set a initial meeting and post it. That sounds Sound great. Good. Yeah. yeah and then we'll good. report at every one of our meetings. We'll report whether it takes a month or two to get it together. And, and just as a follow up, actually, can that's something that we mean more of that? When there's an email sent out to everyone in the committee, never get reply on it. Right. reply to the center. Right. Mm -hmm. Because it can constitute deliberation. Mm -hmm. so, good. So just remind me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Our next, uh, next item. Um, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission has just uh, published their Our Next Future, an action plan for building a smart, sustainable, and resilient Pioneer Valley. I think, I'm not sure if I brought this up at the last committee, commission meeting or not. Um, it's, uh, there are a number of chapters, um, anywhere from uh, Brownfield plan, transportation plan, environment, green infrastructure, housing, food security, but also climate action, clean energy plan in particular uh, is, is one. I was, on, I was on their advisory committee for this. Um, and uh, they, so they published this, and this is, uh, I'm not sure if folks know that one time Northampton endorsed the Pioneer Valley's clean energy plan. And we officially endorsed it. The mayor endorsed it. I think city council did too. Yeah, right. So it was very fully endorsed by, by the, by the um, by Northampton and by a whole bunch of other communities as well. So the Climate Action and Clean Energy Plan, this is um, it's an update of that plan, but it adds adaptation in as well, as well as mitigation. And it actually goes a bit farther. I mean, it's a, it's a bit more robust plan. And then it's part of this whole big package of, of pieces. Um, uh, at this point, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission uh, has said that they're not gonna go out and seek endorsements from communities. Uh, because they think there's a couple of communities that are going to shy away from anything endorsing climate change. Are you committing to any action by endorsing? Is there any binding? I don't think so. But I think politically they decided not to take that action. They were going to go in a different direction. But I heard that, and we're trying to become a star community. Um, we're working on the Sustainable Northampton Plan updating that. And Northampton is very proactive. Um, and it struck me that it would probably would be mutually beneficial if we did endorse it um, because they would enjoy it. They, I mean, it would be good for them, and they have responded. I've, I've passed that idea back to, to them, and, and they came back and said, wow, yeah, that would be great. Maybe we could have a category of endorsed communities. Um, you know, uh, so without them making it a priority, but they could invite others to come in and do that if they want to. And for us, it means that we would be endorsing um, the actions that they're calling for. We would be endorsing the goals that they're calling for, and that's something we don't have at the moment in our Sustainable Northampton Plan is some very specific goals, although we are gonna be a a changing that when we update It's still a year off. Yeah, it's still a year off, though. So, so this could get us um, uh, that, and it would actually help with the STAR communities piece. This would give us another thing that we've done. That's a minor piece, but, uh, <laughs> but you so know. Every little merit badge counts. Exactly, right. Yeah. So, There's so a good press to Are you talking about the climate change piece of this overall plan, or are you talking about the entire future plan that they talked about there? Well, I'm bringing it up right now under um, 
the NEPSC administration piece. So this is, I'm bringing this up just because I want to give the, I want the Energy Commission to have a chance to consider this. Uh, I'm sure no one's gonna vote on it tonight. No one's gonna have a chance to even look at it yet. Um, I do have. Is it available online? As a it is, okay. yeah. Um, I do have uh, some, take two pages and pass on. It's uh, not stable, but it's two pages. So, they're concerned because they don't think community, there are communities that be resistant to the concept that That's the way climate change actually Belgium exists. Belgium Town voted against mm -hmm. the last plan. So I think it was really that Belgium Town. Belgium Town, yeah. yeah. That's the one. I mean, I don't know if yeah. all the can change here. That's what happened six years ago. Yeah. Last one so because I was on the advisory committee, I, when, when their board voted on this, the entire board voted on this, I was asked, mm -hmm. uh, they wanted someone on from each of the different groups to speak for five minutes, and I was asked to come down. I spoke for five minutes. I was then asked by someone on their board, why should they consider this when there's so much in the press saying that climate change doesn't exist? And I was asked that at the board meeting, by the board meeting. It shocked me, but yes, there was a climate change denier out there. And there's so much in the press. Right. <laughs> What you're reading, I guess, is it, right. what echo chamber are you trapped in, pal? <laughs> well, I, 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 I told them that based, uh, based on scientific uh, consensus and not um, uh, journalist consensus, um, that, that I was recommending that the board endorse this. <laughs> so. Well, it's probably on the actions that are inherent to it, right? That by endorsing it, you're in some way not committing to doing this, but you support the idea that New Valley should yeah, when we, take, these actions. when we plan to city council, we talk about endorsing versus adopting. Right. Adopting being sort of, yeah, we're really embracing everything. Endorsing saying, we're endorsing most of it. doesn't mean that we are endorsing a word. Okay. Yeah. Right. right. Okay. So just to um, I pass this out just so we can uh, see just real briefly what it is. Um, and then uh, I, I do recommend that you look at it online. This actually right here is just the executive summaries. This isn't even the whole piece. No. Okay, this is the executive summaries of all the different uh, chapters. So you notice that uh, it does have greenhouse gas reduction, what they call mitigation, and then adapting to climate change adaptation. Is there like a bullet point community should do this? And there is, uh, yes, there is a series of strategies and actions spelled out in each one. Um, I really would recommend to look at the, the full climate change and adaptation piece, but this um, is an executive summary? those are the executive summaries of all the different chapters. Right. Is there an executive summary? The executive summary? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is. <laughs> right, this is, a, no, this is actually just the, the climate change one. Those are the cliff notes. <laughs> right, <laughs> and only of one chapter. Right. It looks like the PowerPoint. Yeah. 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 So actually, I won't go through this, but you can, you can glance through and you can see the kinds of thing it covers. Um, and what I'm hoping is that the commission will take time to, uh, you know, look at particularly the, the uh, uh, adaptation and climate and mitigation part, that, that chapter specifically, but also um, the broader whole slew of, of, of events. And bring it back for further discussion on whether or not we feel that it would be good for the city, city council, the mayor, to adopt, endorse, parts, all of it. Um, you know, I'd like to have the commission just kind of give us some uh, direction on that. Okay. And where do we go for? Um, so I, uh, I will reset. I, I have sent out the uh, links for the climate and clean energy plan piece. This is one chapter. Um, I'll, I'll resend that out, and I will see if I can find where all the rest of the chapters so are. Each one is a standalone yeah. chapter. Right. Yeah, they were all developed. Each standalone chapter was developed individually of each other, and then they were all just bundled together. Mm -hmm. Kind of related thing to this that, that may, this may inform. So tomorrow, um, our five-year hazard mitigation plan expires. Oh, really? And so we're starting the process of writing a new hazard mitigation plan. Hopefully, next can get a FEMA contract before tomorrow. Um, and uh, PVPC got a grant, so they're going to take a lead for doing it, but it's going to be, you know, a hint to plan. Um, and we look at natural hazards, so it's not a climate change section per se, but all the natural hazards are, of course, affected by climate change. So when you deal with flooding, it's affected, when you deal with drought, it's affected. So it's, you know, sort of context behind it. So when you read this, sort of think about that, because it may be that where some things in here are general 
or sort of regional, we may mine this to do a lot of our work for this new plan. And that other plan would be some of the, some of the council and ask them to address. Yeah, just um, okay, so I'll send out links as I can and and hopefully we can continue this discussion. Yeah, I suppose I should ask at the moment. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing people nod their heads. The commission thinks this is actually a good thing to yes. proceed with. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, actually. Okay. Any, any chance to show up health or not? Again, that's five years ago. Yeah, yeah, so you got everything. No, no. Yeah, after a few storm events in Belchertown, maybe they, they thought that. Uh, well, my understanding is that in Belchertown, uh, there was actually a, an uprising, and new select boards were members. Right. Were, yeah, one of them that was uh, was uh, was elected was Jim Barry, who is now our Green Communities yeah. Coordinator. So he so he might be more receptive. To yeah. He's a climate denier. No, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yes, and that counts for five climate yeah, no, <laughs> If you know him, I would actually give him a call and ask him if things have changed. Because I'd be curious as to why they don't want to get endorsed. Um, and go out there. And they may be, as you're saying, gun shy because of what happened last time. But, you know, if you know women, talk to them and say, well, what other communities are they concerned about? Right. Are you, would you be um, comfortable of me putting you in touch with the person? Sure. Absolutely. Okay. Send me an email. Yeah. yeah. And okay. I will have you talk with him. Chris Curtis said, PVPC is the person you should talk to. Were they sort of the lone community? And it wasn't Belchertown that, um, that jumped up at the <laughs> board meeting. Excuse me. Oh. Um, I don't remember where the climate denier came from, but the other guy that voted against it was from Longmeadow. Um, so Longmeadow voted against it, and someone else. Longmeadow. Yeah. There's some Republicans there. <laughs> <already. laughs> yeah. They. I mean, it was things. I feel like I'm playing. I'm, I'm, I'm feel like I'm gossiping here, but quite yeah. frankly, it was it was like transit-oriented design. They. Oh, radical concept. Yeah, they, they just didn't. That was one, something that Longmeadow just didn't want. I mean, they they liked their grids. <laughs> you know? um, uh, well, so they were, and they felt like they were being forced to do it. Uh, we're going to get eighty-five thousand dollars a year from uh, MGM dollars. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's they <laughs> but no, <laughs> no they, they're welcome. The eighty-five thousand dollars is a bad trade-off. Hopefully, <laughs> it's actually a fairly beautiful document. It is. They did a really nice. nice job. Yeah, I didn't see anything reference to stretch code in there. Like, uh, might not have been. So it seemed very uh, broad. Maybe. Yeah, the, their actions and strategies um, cover what's needed, um, but it is a regional plan, and it is it is kind of stays that at that height. Mm -hmm. um, so you, I mean, our our plan should get into more detail. Um, but uh, I mean, there's some there's some graphics in there that it's cool data. Yeah, I know. Paul, can you find, are you on the chapter, the chapter two? It's one of the first. Chapter two. Yeah, one of the first graphics that shows the climate, where, uh, how we were changed. It shows a map of the, of the uh, eastern seaboard. Yeah, the one that has the, uh, right. This one, the small. Yep, that's yeah. always just really powerful to me. Wow. Is that work? Water no, it's not water. They always want to buy my house. It's what, <laughs> it's what our climate's going to be like under different scenarios. And it's like the low, there's a low emission scenario, means by 2050 we will be New Jersey. Um, and climate. 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 <laughs> 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 no, the, the politics are moving up here too. No. 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 And, <laughs> and in the higher, higher emission scenario, by 2050 we will be Southeast. North Carolina. North Carolina. Uh, Virginia. New Jersey, uh, Virginia. I'm sorry, Virginia. that's going to be Virginia. Okay. So it's going to be, and then we'll be South Carolina. <laughs> yeah, that's why Florida's catching up to us. It slows us when we're down in Florida. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like my maple syrup. <laughs> right, and my snowshoe. Well, yeah. right. winters yeah. be more extreme. I always thought the the cold regions would dip down. Um, no. no, that's what's happening. Right. Actually, it's interesting that in this map, they actually show that up till 1990, they have us where we currently are. And they actually show starting in 2010, we're at New Jersey. 
or New Jersey. Oh. <laughs> used to be. I think we narrowed it to Lyme to the extent we Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, vultures. You didn't have vultures. Okay, 50, 15 minutes ago, I, I, will, I will move. I, I actually digressed myself there and wasted some time. Okay, so um, uh, this is an opportunity. Uh, so it's, this is under the action needed uh, piece, and what that basically means is I want, again, individual commissioners to um, uh, make choices here. Um, the Mass Municipal Group uh, formed the Mass, uh, Mass, Mass Municipal Association, formed the Mass Municipal Energy Group a number of years ago. And they formed an online um, collaborative website, which has been a little bit useful, hasn't been used that much, but they're revamping it. And they are now um, basically, and, and they really want it to be used for municipal energy. It's, in other words, they don't want it to be populated with a lot of um, advocacy groups and stuff that aren't really connected to municipal. But they are interested in having commissioners, or, or committee members, commissioners of of uh, city groups uh, participate if they wish. So here's a little handout on what it is. Um, uh, I'm gonna ask if everybody wants to look at it. it it's an opportunity to share ideas, uh, you know, find research that other people have done on different things. Um, if anybody is interested, uh, I can follow up and get you signed up for Mass, or for the MMEG, Mass Municipal Energy Group uh, website. Um, have you gone on and used it? So yeah, I've, I've used it. Think of it. I've used it in the past, and it, um, it wasn't very highly used, and that was its main problem. Uh, but there were times when I, someone would post a question, and I would get back, and they would say thank you, so I helped them. And times when I had questions, and I went out and asked some questions and got some information back from them, it was pretty nominal. Uh, and they have recently recognize that it was being underused and they've revamped the entire thing. Um, and it's really just barely now, up, I haven't had a chance to use the new one. It's not particularly sexy. No, that's definitely. <laughs> so I, I don't think that's it. I don't think. No, this, no. Is, the one, this is the I, link they had on here. Wow, sign okay. Up and then go to the mass, that's the MMA sign up address. Yeah, I don't think that's what it's gonna look like when you. Well, no, when you, when no you get. You sign up. Yeah. yeah. You Once you sign up, you get a, <laughs> a much more interactive right. Facebook-like okay. page right. with right. Uh, you know resources and links and. Um, You're saying they want more representatives of municipalities? Because here it seems very open, social network, professionals. It seems like they want anyone to be involved in it. Huh? You create your own account. That's going for you. You're saying they're asking. They, they want their, their idea is this is meant to help municipal employees. I mean, it's really its main focus is to help cities and towns of Massachusetts move forward. So it's not to help business community, you know, business groups or mm -hmm. um, other groups. Uh, it's, it's, it's really meant for municipal groups. So that being the focus, you know, but it could be community outreach. There are people out here that have already had conversations around how do you reach out to do energy efficiency in the community. And, um, anyhow, it's a resource and if there's any way I can get, if you guys, if someone says, look, I can't tell what this is all about, give me a PowerPoint, you know, I'll see if I can dig something up and I'll give you a, a nicer screenshot than that. So well, it's, to it's, well, hey, this, this might be the guys to uh, contact about other municipalities that may have. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out. MLS. <coughs> yeah. So if you yeah. sign up, do you get a, uh, like an encoder ring? And <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's MMA, they give you stress balls. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody got one on my yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and then you give these nice little shields that you put over your car that, that makes the Jeep look like a Prius? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the car wrap. Right. <laughs> on my Tundra. Actually, it's the other way around. It makes your Prius look like a, like right. a Hummer. <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, all right. Do you need action on that? Nope, nope. It's, it's, it's funny, I actually, uh, I, I love these, Scott sent these at one time, status report, decision needed, action needed, feedback. You know, I have it at the end of the agenda. Yeah. And um, so this was action needed. Action needed, and action needed means would culminate in assignment to one or more NESC members. Your assignment is decide whether or not sign you up. want to sign up, right? <laughs> um, okay. So the last item is just ongoing project status updates. Um, so we've received a draft resiliency report from Rivermore uh, that I've just started looking over. David hasn't even had a chance to look at it yet. 
lots of typos, hasn't been formatted yet. Um, uh, but uh, it's reading really well to start off with. And um, just a kind of update of where we're at. So Rivermore is finalizing their, their report. Um, the energy strategies piece with Mass Clean Energy Center. <coughs> They seem to be struggling a little bit in getting the actual strategies written, and I've gone back and forth with them on formatting content, and <coughs> I think we went back to MSEC, and MSEC kind of had them redo the whole formatting, bring it to a different place. So, so it's not ready yet, but uh, each one of the strategies had a thing called project tasks, and it spelled out just the steps that the community would do to take care of this project. And I looked at some of them, and I was like, this is so generic, How does, this doesn't really fit. I said, to make this effective, um, it really should fit Northampton's way of working. And so this isn't really something I'm going to bring up for the entire Energy Commission, but for department heads. Um, I am going to want to, and I, don't, I won't do it at this meeting, we don't have enough time. I put it on the agenda just in case, but um, uh, things like city-owned photovoltaics in the landfill, distributed PV over parking lots, um, anaerobic digestion, LED street lights, the bike share program. I'd like to find time with the department heads to sit down and just look at their project tasks um, and say, how do we do it in Northampton? You know, do you start a committee first? Do you bring it up to the mayor? Do you just have someone, you know, assign it to a department and have them do it? Probably would take a half hour first to kind of go through these things. Uh, so just a kind of heads up um, that I'm going to reach out and just try to use some feedback that I can give up to them so that when the publication does come out, it looks like something that makes sense for Northampton. Um, uh, LED street lights. Um, <clears throat> keep forgetting what I've mentioned to the commission before, but as, we, as you know, National Grid does have a rate tariff right now, and if I reported on this before, I would have mentioned that they had a disconnect and reconnect charge for each light that would have added about $300 or $350 to each light that we had to do. Um, that has been removed. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mass, uh, Mass uh, Municipal, uh, Municipal Association, what was it, MAPC. Uh, yeah. Mass is, is a regional planning agency. Yeah, yeah, MAPC, I always forget. Metropolitan Area Thank Planning you. Commission. Thank you, Metropolitan That's Area Planning right. Commission. Um, it was working with a lot of national grid uh, territories in trying to get LED street lighting going. And they've got an ESCO, um, Energy Service Company, or performance contract. They're going to be doing lighting upgrades and performance contract. And we're invited to join, be, uh, to join in. Um, and we can take part in this, go through the RFQ process, if what they select, the company they select, and the details of it is not, not to our liking, we can back out with no um, expenses to us. So I'm probably going to sign on, but it's that group, MAPC, that has been taking feedback from communities, feeding it back to National Grid, and has managed to get them to drop that piece and actually change a few other things that I didn't pick up on, you know, insurance needs and stuff like that. They're asking communities to carry $5 million of insurance, which is, I guess, is ridiculous. And so they're working on a few other things as well to get National Grid to actually come up with a program that's reasonable. So these added tariffs are moved if you're part of this um, bundled ESCO? Or yeah. they've been working on it for everyone. They've been working on it for everyone. So this would change the way the National Grid does their rate tariff. Um, but what they're doing is they're bundling up, um, uh, getting someone to do a, a, basically a performance contract to upgrade to LED street lights um, for many, many communities, multiple communities. And we do procurement for that. We don't have to do our own bidding. And yeah. Course. That's the reason it's like, if, if I can back out at any time, why wouldn't I do this? Because it could save so much work. Yep. Let them let them do it. Um, so M E C Metropolitan Area Planning Commission M A P C. Chris, you don't need an endorsement from us for that. Though. No, mm -hmm. I don't think I do. No, you mm -hmm. ask for money. Right? Yeah, I'm not okay. not asking for money, and we can always back out. So, yeah. but I've always addressed it with the commission. Thanks, you know, if you guys. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> Chris, if you want to be helpful, looking at the performance contract details, that's my daily. I've got a big thick packet I haven't found time to read yet. <laughs> I hand it off to you. Seriously, Scott, can I get you a copy? Fantastic. Great. My input, you've heard me say this before, is if we're going to replace streetlights, 
it would be nice not just to replace them, but to think about where the street lights shine or the different ways to do it. Yeah. Okay, so towards that, um, because of the speed of this moving forward, uh, it struck me that it, it was still worth it to go forward, and it, it may be that in the end, what we do is we identify all the street lights that we know we're going to keep. Um, uh, that we absolutely know we're not going to get rid of them. We know maybe all the intersections. Maybe we just, just do intersections. But I don't know. I'd, I'd like to hear your feedback. So if you're driving down a street and you have kind of yellowish street lights, and then down the street, down the corner up there where you have the intersection, all of a sudden you have a really nice moonlight white, you know, very visible. It's going to be actually, you can be able to see better. Um, as you get to that intersection, and, but it's a different light color. I have no idea whether that would bother people, whether that would be a danger. I think it might be okay, safety-wise, I actually think that. Well, I mean, with LEDs, you more full spectrum light. You can identify colors better. With right. Mercury mm -hmm. vapor, you're literally, it's, instead of black and white, it's orange and... Oh, that's yeah, hyper sodium. Yeah, one. it's, it's, it's sodium. Sort of yellow. Yeah. Right. I'm yeah. sorry, and the... Yeah. And I and I've seen no. I, well, I don't know. I've driven through. You know, when East Hampton was in transition, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't particularly jarring. It's you know, I mean, the, it's I mean, you're not so concerned about the light as much as trying to identify features and things on the ground. So it's not the color of the light. So although people have, I know when we did the ornamentals, people complained about it in some or when the Army Street lot occurred, everyone thought we turned the lights down. In some in some cases, they thought we turned the lights down. The point fact is actually brighter, and you could identify better. It's just it wasn't so ambient. You didn't feel as ambient and glowy as the mercury vapor, um, the sodium did. Um, but then they became adjusted to it, and, right. and, and, and now it's yeah. I never heard there was any comment on the ambient. No, there is. There was, well, was okay. always comment, Chris. There, there, it's that's still slight. <laughs> 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 so it's common. But it's, it's okay. I mean, it wasn't. I thought it went unnoticed. <laughs> no pitchforks were sharpened as far as I know. So, uh, does this, would this include the ornamentals too? And no, the ornamentals are metered. Right, that's right. So we can do them separately. We don't need to do talk about a rate tariff. And then uh, as to the issue of dark sky stuff, I mean, we do have guidelines to that. LEDs would would be dark side compliant. They just naturally fit because you can aim the lights. Mm -hmm. I mean, no we have a number of municipal lights that actually we require it and all new development, of course, we don't abide by it in some cases, so the, the, there have been some comments about that as well. So. Yeah, well, <coughs> what about lighting to support the, um, the train and the new platform in that lot? Would all that be new and therefore not part of this uh, retrofit? I That's all new construction. Right. Platform of this new construction. And and that's not that we're going to build lot back there. Even that parking lot. <coughs> no, not the parking lot. It's just the actual stadium here to get on and off the train. It's all new. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Who's actually going to be building that? That I don't know. But it would be contracted for the state. 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 Okay. And the one case where we do have the dark sky in compliant lights will be part of this LED retrofit piece. I mean, the, the, or that'll be the post tops. Good. So okay. Those will be. Good. Those will be. A, Corrected. <laughs> Police station. Police station. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Police station. This lot. Uh, well, some of them are grandfathered. So right. But what I'm saying is, yeah. despite that they're grandfathered, the fact. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm not. Yeah. We made the rules so we can comply. But then, I, mean, I think that, in, in the interest of promoting our the, the, the spirit of this, which is what we're all, we're always because we're the trying to serve as a model as well, and going out to right. what else. Right. It's hard to go to a planning board meeting, you tell everyone they have to do dark sky lighting, they come out in the parking lot and go, right. <laughs> that was <laughs> very building. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so so Wayne, towards that your comment, I've I've been thinking that if we plan everything out to the nth degree, we'll probably delay doing LEDs for so long. So the idea is to identify the ones that we know we're gonna go and go with them. And ones where we think we might want to adjust them, maybe hold them back. I mean, and uh, everything that has every street intersection and every light at a crosswalk, we should keep. Right. It's the lights that are just along the sidewalk that they should be lighting the sidewalk and not the street. Right. 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 So if I if I have to make a decision one way or the other and and again, hold some back, that's what I would do. I would look yeah. for the ones that we know we have to keep anyhow. So. And and there has been some discussion of this in the LED community. So it may well be that the lights. Or automatically adjustable, in which case they could all work. 
I mean, it depends on what they're, what they're focusing on this RFK. I don't know how that is. But. Okay, right. No, that's a good point. Right. We might ask if, you know, can you pull out a, an array? You know, right. it's, got, it's got four lines of LED lights. Can you pull one out because it happens to be aiming at the building? Exactly. And we weren't the ones who invented the idea of let's focus on the sidewalk. Right. The street, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, Christmas lights. LED Christmas lights. We have those. Do you already? Yeah, I'll, 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 that's another one. Yeah. There's big savings our, there. Our feeble LED uh, Christmas lights. They're not <laughs> <laughs> so Scott's right on the ball here. <laughs> it's 5.30. We've got to go talk about stormwater. We have an hour. Thank you, everybody. Okay. So you do find a journey?